Welcome to the Five Tools Show. Today, I just want to talk about just one thing. Let's be honest. Fanatics is an absolute disaster from A to Z. Like, I'm gonna, I'm trying to think of the things that happened so far with Tops in the last couple of years. Like, there was the fake Babe Ruth autograph. How you, bro, I, I can't even dive into each one of these. You had the fake Babe Ruth autograph. You had the fake Tampa Bay Devil Rays. You had the multiple one-on-ones. You had going from 24 packs to 20 packs. You messed up on update Chrome with the short prints. Um, you didn't put the new stamp on a 2024 tops one of ones. Um, the quality control is terrible, uh, bro. I can't. There's more. I'm, hold I, on, I hold on. More. They I had the, a... hold on. They had the nerve to put a minus one. Remember they had minus negative refractors, bro. Come on. Come on, negative refract. What are you doing? So I got something to minus five now. What? what are, like, where are you? There's so many beautiful things you could do to a baseball card. You know what I'm saying? Like, how are you going to destroy it? What, what? I mean, I don't understand. You just named a bunch. You named so many in a short period of time. It's actually embarrassing. Like, let's just be real. That's something that you could have maybe went ten years about, and and it would and it would have been a little crazy. On top of it, the uniforms are a disaster. Total disaster. It it's embarrassing. Bro, I can't even my my daughter's nine. Her jerseys are fucking perfect. Do you not perfect? How can you be who you are and destroy what what's the most important thing to me? The most important thing outside of the actual gameplay is a uniform. It's a, it, it, it's it's baseball, bro. It's it's class, right? It just shows what it's bad enough. The uniforms are, are not as good as they were in terms of the stirrups with the long pants, with just like you know not looking classy. You know the All Star Game's not the same anymore. The way you know you saw you know the best uniforms out there, all that. But to have numbers crooked and having names, some names so small. You know, I, I posted this on Ghost Jerseys, and it's so true. I said it's bad enough, right, when you have the fans complaining. But when the players are complaining and the union has to get involved, it's a, that's a disaster. disaster. 100%. That's insane. I know. I, you know, I read, I read an article. I think it was in The Athletic. Um, and they, they were trying to explain why – the uniforms were that way. Like they're trying to use less material. They're trying to be more aerodynamic and whatever. And then it was like fanatics blaming Nike and Nike blaming fanatics. Bro, at the end of the day, producer, owner, whatever it is, you guys are responsible. And it's a, it's horrible. This, the uniforms, I know, man, that's crazy. That's Yo, another crazy thing. Pants? They had see-through pants. How could you make pants where you could see the uniform through the pants? Like, what are we doing? I almost feel like it's like, who who did they take over? Well, you know what I'm saying? Like, who's doing it? What's, like, how? You know, it's just mind-boggling that it's professional baseball. Uniforms were always the greatest thing. You know, look back. It was class, you know, in colors, the look. You know, when you spent money back in the days for a jersey, you know, you know, people that could afford a pro jersey, three, four hundred bucks, whatever it is, you put that on. You had to stitch the numbers. You had the patches. You You were like, now these jerseys, I get it. They're trying to make it to where, you know, feels better. It's lighter. Cool. I get it. But you, it's got to have the look of a, for that, you might as well, be, you know, might as well buy a, a fake Chinese jersey. Something from China, like some ridiculous jersey, like the fake ones that used to be on Canal Street when we were kids. You know, it's like, it's got to be, come on, this is the major leagues, bro. So if you're not doing the right thing on the uniform side, right? And then you get the card, the card side of it. I mean, come on, man. Like, like, come on, bro. Like, you can't have bad everything. It's got to be one thing that, and especially with the jerseys, that's their whole thing, right? Before the cards, that was their thing. You Jersey. So just boggles my mind, bro. I'm ranting, but like, it's a, it amazes me that it could ever get that bad jersey-wise. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's crazy. I saw the pictures that I'm getting roasted on Twitter. It's definitely bad news. It, it's... Unbelievable. And the problem with this, and you know, especially on the card side, is that it's a monopoly and that's it. Doesn't matter. This is what you're getting. That said, let me let me move on to something else. Now, Tops came out with um uh you know 2024 series one, whatever. And um the first thing I thought to myself was, wow, like the chrome parallels are gonna look crazy. 
And I never really try to judge cards until I own a pack or two. You know, I buy some. I did buy some. And honestly, like, I'm going to put Tops 2024 Series 1 in, in, in there with 72 Tops, 75 Tops, 90 Tops. Just weird, right? Like, yo, you think of 1990 Tops, it's so different. You think of 75 Tops, it's like, wow. You look at 72 Tops, it's like psychedelic almost, some graffiti style you know, letters. Um, I think that's cool that they did something different. You know, I think the cards are actually cool. I like the uh, gradient kind of like um, two-tone um, borders and all that. Um, but what I don't like about it is what, you know, the same thing I haven't liked about tops for the last like seven or eight years, which is putting in tons of insert sets, a lot of like parallels that don't look good. I'll, I will say though, the stars of MLB parallels did look good this year. They look really nice, but you know, when there are 30 insert sets and all that, yeah, that's nice. You that's know, nice. the throwbacks are really nice. I mean, this is, you know, I got, I got this Volpe little yellow joint. I mean, I have to say, like, like you, you know, going back to what you just said, it's a very different, when I first saw the neon, um, also got this Jeter, which is, this is pretty cool with the pinstripe. Oh Play yeah, that's awesome, bro. Any hey Jeter pinstripe it, man. Yo, it's player worn too. I mean, well, it's not game worn, but still. I mean, whatever. It's something. But um, the crazy thing is, like what you said, when I first saw the neon, I was like, ah, this is like, you know, what is this? You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, I bought a box, whatever, opened it, enjoyed myself, read the back of the cards. I feel like they're writing on the back was like a little old school too, is more funny and more like, you know, they so they put work into it what i could say but the look man yo it's a nice looking set bro i i really have anything bad to say about it you know what i'm saying i really don't it's like you said it's very different but i like that they went away from that look a few years ago where you couldn't read the players names you know it was very well it was very overpowering and like a lot of white you know it was very like on the eyes and just looked like they no one put any time into it in this set you know it looks like you know they really they really put some time and i know it's probably you know, the kids, the younger kids probably love it with the neon and all that, which is cool. Like you said, you threw a few sets in it. At 72 was like, it was way different. But I'm not going to, listen, I can bash them a hundred times, but at the end of the day, product wise, I mean, they did, I feel like they did do a good job this year with, with the series one. Yeah, no, I, I agree. You know, I agree. I, I, when I first saw it, I was like, oh man, I don't know, you know. But I keep it to myself, man. I don't want to discourage anybody. Like, nah, who am I going to discourage? I don't think anyone cares. But still, you know, it's like I don't want to be that person who's like, oh, this thing sucks. Listen, last year's last year's cards were nice. I, I thought it maybe looked a little bit like maybe crowded and busy, but it was kind of a cool design. You know, the, the parallels look really cool. The base cards are nice. I, I did like 2023. And 2024 is nice because, you know, 2022 is actually pretty nice too. 2021 is terrible. 2020, Terrible. ah, it's not so bad. 2019 is weird with the half, it's like kind of half Bowman, half with that tops. weird border, yeah, side border, like you know. And they went through some years where it was kind of like 55 and 56 tops, like 2017, 17, 2018. It's not that different, you know. There's like a different, like you know, yep, whatever they put the banner on and all that. Um, but you know, my whole thing is like, you know, I I got, I bought like a hundred bucks worth of. uh of like blasters and stuff. And I really didn't get like hardly any color at all. You know, I thought maybe I'd get some more, um, but whatever it is, what it is, man. You, you know, it's like, I don't know what the odds are. I know they're going to make a gazillion sets of this. So I'm going to do what I have been doing, which is like, I'm looking now, I'm buying Adley Rushman refractors and PSA tents for 50 bucks. I'm buying, um, you know, uh, my man Gunnar Henderson and, and Corbin Carroll stuff like those cards. They're out there. They're like eighty dollars, ninety dollars, because everybody is constantly thinking about the next player, this and that. I think you could still get Bobby Witt cards for good money, you know. So it's cool the Ellies and all that, you know. Whatever, it's fun. The rookie chase, I'm I, I'm all about it. I do miss um, opening day. I think that's kind of whack. But here's another thing: talking about buying cards from last year, right? Um. So yeah, I was talking. You know, you you were talking about Volpe. Then my man said something about Volpe. I was like, all right, yeah, let me just like dive into. Let me just grab a crazy Volpe. And I saw for two hundred nine bucks on eBay, uh, a gold, a Bowman Gold refractor to fifty, 
in a PSA nine for two hundred and nine dollars. It cost me two hundred, th- whatever, forty, thirty bucks with shipping, all that. And like, there's been a lot of discussion recently on Twitter or like some posts about you know PSA nines. A lot of people are like you know, kind of hating on PSA nines and stuff. Um, I think PSA nines are dope because like, if I was crazy, I if I bought that Volpe in a ten, that would be like I don't know thousand bucks maybe like five times you got it's a gold refractor it's going to be five to seven times more right it's like dude it's a mint grade if the kid has a great career boom i have a nice card if he has a whatever career i still got his gold refractor really i don't care it's 200 i mean but you, you know like the the difference between the nine and the ten now so crazy you know like i feel like with modern i remember like Somebody wrote, like, I, I posted something that I just got back, and they were like, it was a nice car. I forget what it was, like, four years ago. And they were like, oh, yeah, that's the kiss of death, a PSA 9. And I was like, dude, what? You know, to me, it's a mint card, bro. It's a mint grade. I'm good with mint. Mint, I'm good with. What are your thoughts on PSA 9s, bro? Like, you could probably get a, a Garrett Cole, like, future Hall of Famer refractor, like, to 50 for, like, 500 bucks, maybe. Well, he, he, here's right? what you just said. How crazy is so- that? But here's what you, here, here's my whole thing with the PS signs. We talked about this before. It's like if you got a gold, right? That gold is to fifty or whatever it is, bro. To have a PSA nine that there's only fifty of is totally different from, than having a PSA nine refractor or PSA nine that's to four ninety nine or something like that. When you have something to fifty, then the PSA nine is in play. And my and listen, in my book, everybody could be different. Hey, you might have somebody might you know their whole their whole thought process for their PC is to go get a 10, especially on modern cards. Right. But for me, if something's like even a hundred, if it's a, you know, if it's like a, maybe like a, a future hall of fame or 99 Garrett Cole or something like that. I mean, you got to look at the player, obviously, if it's a card, you know, if you have an Acuna, you know, like an Acuna rookie refractor is probably in a PSC 10 is probably only a hundred bucks. I mean, I don't even know what it's even. It's, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But now if you get a, something to 50, a gold of that in a PSA 9, it's a whole different story. So my thought yeah. process for that is always like, you know, if it's a low number card, especially golds, golds are forever like immortalized, right? A classic gold card to me always wins over any color in my book. Gold is just like that. You have something gold, a rookie gold. I love a rookie gold, but like PSA nine rookie gold, bro. All day I'm taking a PSA nine all day. Yep. Yeah. No, I agree with that. It, it's uh, yeah, it is what it is. I I just find that people, you know, the difference for me, like I'm a collector, so it's like, yeah, I'll get this card in a nine. If I wanted a ten, the card is a thousand bucks. The card's two hundred dollars in a nine. It's easy decision for me. I want the card. Plus, it's in a mint grade. I mean, what people don't get, and and I'll agree to an extent, like, yeah, you know, base cards, unfortunately, now in a nine are pretty much done because even tens now, it, it, tens are pretty much done in the base card. And, you know, like how we look at, you know, Barry, you could get a Barry Bonds, like at the height of the, of the craziness, a Barry Bonds in a PSA nine was like a hundred bucks, you know. Now I'm saying a Barry Bonds rookie in 87 top. So, like, say a Don Ross, the rookies, whatever. Now the card's like 50 bucks, right? Whatever. It's still 50 bucks. I know it's a PSA 9. There's probably 30,000 or whatever it is. But yeah. we look back at that era and it's like, yo, it's not the cards in the mint grade, but there's so many of them. We're going to look back at this era like, oh, that's cool. Like, say, Pete Alonzo or whatever's in the Hall of Fame. All right, that's cool. You know, you have the Pete Alonzo gold, whatever. That ain't really worth anything. I got the Pete Alonzo, whatever, you know, Montgomery Club whatever fancy sapphire like i don't even get into those cards because you know i'm <laughs> yeah. old school you know it's like it's like that kind of thing where the base card is so like you know disrespect not disrespected but like it's worth nothing i remember when i was in vegas a couple of years ago bro i was going through boxes dylan carson psa 10s for 10 bucks all these like rookie kids that were good like uh you know alec bomb all these kids 10 bucks bomb bomb it's like dude what all base cards, there have to be a gazillion of those cards. So, you know, if anyone thinks we're not in a junk slab era, I mean, that's just absurd. No. So that's why I try to... Well, you got to also... But also, if something's going to your PC, to me, it doesn't really matter. Like, honestly, 
You know, I mean, if I was looking for a card for a long time and I came across it and I couldn't find it and it was a PSA 8, I'm buying it. I, all right, worst kind of worst, go, yo, crack it out and just put it in, put it in, put it in a in a in a top loader. If you don't want to see that grade, or maybe you want to resub it or something like that. But if you want that card, you know, you can't like what is it? Buy the card, not the grade, right? I mean, it, it is what it is. If it's going in your collection. Then why are you gonna, you know, worry about really? That's me. I mean, for real, I, I don't worry about the grade. I don't care if I post something and it's an eight. Why, why do you get an eight? Because I like the card and I haven't seen it anywhere else, <laughs> right? Right. So that's really the way I look at it too. Like I think people people overdo the whole grade thing. If it's something that you're never gonna get rid of, or you're not gonna get rid of for five six years down the road or something like that, then you know. But like I said, everybody everybody does this for their own strategy and their own own thoughts. So I don't ever judge anyone. And, I, you know, I mean, it is what it is, bro. It's the art of collecting, right? We all have our own way to do it. No, nah, yeah, that's that's a good point. You know, there's some, uh, like, some of these 90s inserts, bro, the, the pops are so low on some of these cards. And I'm just like, whatever. I don't even care. I'll just put it into a one-touch. Just like, you know, and I'm good. Like, what am I, I don't care. It's a card, like, you know, it's... I don't need to grade it. I don't need to do... You know, sometimes I like to grade. That's awesome, bro. That is so dope. That is really, really, and the dominators, you know, bro, and they have the and the and the number down there that you know what it's the oh yeah so I so I did some research on on this card and like I know you're you're huge with the '90s stuff when I saw that I don't have a, a Ryan and I always love I always love this set you know but you just don't see these come you know you don't see them pop up often whatever and not if they are you kind of look at the condition on eBay and they're like all chipped up when I yep. saw this and it really didn't have anything on it I was like oh this is crazy. But it's just the look of Nolan in his last year. You know what I'm saying? A set like this to 5,000, bro, back then. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's, and then I look back on it, and 2,500 were signed, and the other 2,500 weren't. So that makes it, you know, even a smaller number for, you know, for back then. How many of these probably never even got opened, right? Or, or they? And then I found out where these came from, from the Home Shopping Network. You had to buy the whole set. Bro, when I saw that, I said, that's legendary right there. Because, come on, bro. You remember them dudes back in the days on the Home Shopping Network going nuts. What was that one guy? He was out of Vermont. Yeah. Bro. Is he still around? Let's find this guy, bro. But, yeah, he was a legendary dude. Yeah, that guy was. Yeah, no, that's. Bro, I love that era. It's, it's you know, we've we've spoken about this many times. It's like. You know, you look at like a, an elite series or whatever. There's like some of them for ten thousand cards, bro. Like, and we did it. One of our videos, I feel like I put. Remember, I, I pulled a, a like a ninety four like elite Wongo. Like oh. I did that. Much. I was like, oh, I see something. My wife filmed it. I think we put it in one of our videos. But the thing is, there's still those cards out there because there's a ton of nineties Don Russ sitting in people's houses and all these places. It's not that rare. It's kind of like a case hit, you know. Still. So, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, but bro, it's it's an amazing card to 2,500. I'm saying there are there are more of those Nolan Ryan sitting somewhere. So like how many of them are actually out? You know, like we bro. think, of, like, oh, wow, you know, that's so many cards. No, it's not. Because back in the day, how many boxes and pallets of Donruss did they make? They made a crazy amount. Bro. So that would have been a freaking trailer freaking hit. Like, oh, yeah, there's one on the truck. Bro. The kid dropped <laughs> off seven pallets. Of well, that's the point. <laughs> With these cards, how many are you going to see these, like, packed fresh? This thing's, like, right. packed fresh. Amazing and I took card. a chance. I mean, I didn't I didn't know that looking at it. But, you know, like I said, I got it from, actually, from Cards with a Story, from his Wednesday his Wednesday uh, little thread. You know, you got collectors on there. So, obviously, those dudes are, you know, it's that inner circle where you're selling it and everybody kind of knows each other. So, you, you know, you'd kind of feel more comfortable than grabbing off eBay from someone you have no idea, you know, and, you know, they do the pictures where maybe it's not right. So whatever. But you're right, bro. Like, you don't even know. I mean, th how much would those. But the crazy thing for those to be in like a set and not in packs. I didn't right. know that. Yeah, you know? I, I, either. I, and know I think that it's would... Mattingly. I think it's Ryan Mattingly, Juan gone and I, somebody else. But that's a hell of a set for autos. The Mattingly must be crazy, too. Right? That's another one. I saw one on eBay once for like in the PSA eight for like I forget what it was and I was gonna buy it and I and I didn't and then somebody bought it. But yeah, no, that's that's awesome, bro. I love those stories about those like random cards you can only get in certain places in the nineties, whatever. And then um, yo, all right, 
one one more thing before we do like a quarter classic or whatever. Um, top as as far as I know, and I heard this, Tops is getting rid of the living set. You know, which I think sucks. I mean, I I have a couple of living set cards. Uh, I think it's one of the coolest ideas Tops ever had. I really do. Like the idea of it is is very cool. Like, yo, you're gonna make one card a set that could last forever, and you can induct guys in. Like, you're gonna make a Hank Aaron. X amount of people will buy it. You, you know, they do the print run like Tops now or whatever. I think it's really. It was a really cool thing, bro. And the fifty three Tops is like a great set, right? Like we I don't even need to get into that. So it's, just and the beautiful candid shots, you know. Right. And I mean, like honestly, if I were doing the living set, I would have probably said, you know what, make a completely different, you know, design so that this is the living set. Cause, you know, whatever. I'm not gonna get into all the different yeah. archive stuff. But um the idea I think was really cool, bro. And now it's I I from what I saw on Twitter today, it's not happening. What are your thoughts on that? I I don't have any personally. I always I always love the look. I didn't know that, but that's another thing. Why are you going to take away something like that that has such it's such a cool thing? I mean, for me, it doesn't like there's so many things you can get rid of. <laughs> you know why that? I would love to. I'm going to look into that because I didn't know that. But yeah, I don't. I think it's a cool thing. I just saw Ellie. One, I think Ellie has one of those. Um, I think he does. I, I swear, I just saw that. But yeah, I feel like he does. I, there was a lot. Like I know Gleber Torres does. Chris yeah. Bryant awesome players you know and it's like dude this is a cool idea what are you doing why would you get rid of that it's kind of like etops you know etops is similar um i just picked up an ichiro etops rookie for less than a price of uh series one box you know uh etops is like they it was kind of stock market thing where they'd be like all right we're gonna do an ipo for this ichiro card we're gonna you know we're, it's gonna cost three or five bucks we're gonna make x amount whatever and people would, you know, buy into it. And I was doing a little research, and apparently half of most of these cards are in, like, a warehouse somewhere. So they're, like, in storage, you know. But there's a lot of dairy rookies. Like, there's crazy rookies in ETOPS, bro. And great idea, just like a band. This is, I mean, they have banned that before, years before, um, you know, Fanatics. But, like, since Fanatics has come... It's like you got rid of living set. You got rid of opening day. The opening day parallels from Target is to get them on Queens Boulevard, Target Mall over there in Elmhurst and get the cool red ones and shit. And then like the retail, you know, the blue ones that I would get from the hobby, you know, those were actually up to 2000. People don't know that. I caught the Luis Robert in 2020. You know, it's cool. They had some, it was a nice set, man. Got rid of that. They have big league for the first time. Big league is on time because for the last couple of years, you know, big league's supposed to be for the kids and tops. You know, they care about the kids so much. It's always a year late this year yeah. on time. They got all these. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to say nothing bad about somebody because I, I just not say anything, but they got some influencers in there, bro. That I, whatever. Let's not go there. But anyway, bro, let's do the quarter classics. I got, I, I got something. It's not a quarter classic. It costs more than a quarter, but I got to show it's <laughs> crazy. Go ahead. So, yo, I was in Vegas in a, uh, antique shop whatever my wife and i'm like looking around shit i'm not even thinking about cards and then i see a cabinet bro the roy white joe pepitone dual auto cuz nah what <laughs> yo roy white joe bro that's crazy 15 bucks yo. bro how much 15 bucks bro i've never seen those two on a card together that's crazy Pepitone was like, you know, he was he was he was like a, you know, he was like an actor, you know, he was like Hollywood, you know, Pepitone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, funny story I gotta say about Pepitone. Back when my pops was around, I was really little and he got a ticket. I was probably like four years old or something. He got his tickets. I don't really remember this. I remember being there, but I remember my mom telling the story. And my pops had long black hair. You know, he looked, you know, he had that wavy hair, that 70s thing. And we were coming out, and I don't know how my, my pops had got us to park in the Yankees parking lot, whatever. Maybe he had a pass or whatever. So we're parked there, and we're leaving, and all these kids start, Joe, Joe. And my dad's name is Joe. So the, he's looking like, what? Who, how do these kids? So my mother's going like, what do these kids know you? like? What? So they go, they all think he's Joe Pepitone. So they're running after him, and he's signing autographs. Uh, Bro. Fake Joe Pepitone autographs, <laughs> And that was the craziest story. Like, I, every time I think of Joe Pepitone, I think of that story. Like, I wish I was old enough to see it because I would have probably been in tears. But my mom used to always tell me. That's incredible. That's legendary, bro. All right. 
I picked this up recently for like a few bucks, but it's like, bro, these cards were these cards were ill. Like ahead of another ahead of the time cards. And is um, that seventies Kellogg's three D? Yeah, bro, those cards are. And yo, yo, and those... this thing is this king. This thing is total like, it's like Jim. It's like mint. There's nothing on it. That's like it's like it just came out of the thing. And what's great about I mean Paul Carrollson, bro, and we grew up. People don't remember. Obviously, he's the voice, you know, of the White Sox and stuff. But he he used to announce for the Yankees back in the days on Sports Channel, and he always had that great home run call. You know, put it on the board. Yes, man, he used to do that. A legendary guy, man. He Hall Carrollson is a you know he was a ball player, but he was his his work as an announcer to me is he's very he's very underrated. Not underrated to people that love him, but I mean in the masses, he just had a great voice and he's always been a, a baseball guy. Yeah, that's sick. That's a dope card, bro. That's dope, bro. Yeah, like, yeah, yo, like that. That set, those sets are like. You know, they used to be like for nothing. Now I see them graded. They're going for big money. They're going yeah, for Yeah, they lot. go for big bucks. Like, wow. Beautiful cards. I mean, yeah, beautiful. Way way ahead of their their time. I mean, when you you a lot of times you see them and they're yellowish and they're kind of like, you know, bent and curved. This yeah. thing, I don't know. Whoever had this, this guy must have just had a box of them stashed forever because they're all it's pure white. Like a lot of the backs usually are like yellowish. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so 100%. that card yeah. is awesome. Cool card. But yo, man, that was dope. Good show. And we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.